Hi, my name is Leslie Hurstein and I study water. Uh, my general area of research is uh, I look at the complexity of water sectors and how engineers fit into that complexity. My supervisor is Professor Barry Adams and I have a co-supervisor who's at Queen's University. His name is Yves Fillion. And I study the complexity of water sectors, particularly the Ontario water sector. And I study a bunch of different dimensions of that sector. So the technical part, the social part, the ecological part, the economic part, and the governance part, and how all of those fit together in, in complex. Uh, so a specific example of something that I've been working on lately is uh, how, how to get water sectors and all the stakeholders in water sectors to develop uh, the same understanding and language of what is happening in the sector um, and how that affects each individual's work. So I use uh, these things called scenarios or futures, which are narratives or stories about uh, the water sector in the future. So last year we got uh, about 30 stakeholders together from the water sector and we created three 50-year futures for the Ontario water sector. One was ideal or utopian and two were dystopian. Uh, so that's helped the people in the water sector, it helps people in the water sector think about ways in which they can do their work better, possibly more collaboratively, uh, to make the water sector in Ontario better and more viable. I t so I don't use a lot of technological models or uh, analytical models. Uh, I've used more of a soft systems approach to my research. Uh, to understand a little bit better how engineers fit into uh, water infrastructure and into water economies. Uh, and I've found that that approach has helped me realize that we can develop better models uh, to model water sector behavior and better technologies uh, that are more appropriate. So using the soft systems approach first and then using a hard systems approach after that. The water workshop scenarios that we created, so there's one utopian scenario and two dystopian scenarios. The utopian scenario was created through the, the workshop that we did by everyone identifying 10 agreed upon ideal points of what they'd like to see in the 50 year future. So they decided uh, there are a few things. So one was that there, you know, for instance, there would be free flowing clean water throughout our cities and towns all throughout Ontario. Or that we would have this culture of continuous improvement in technology and in social approaches to water. Um, that we would have a more integrated ecosystem, society, technology approach to water. Uh, that we'd have a lot more monitoring and smart systems associated with water. So the ideal scenario would be how we get from here and transition to that kind of future. Uh, the two dystopian scenarios uh, are what would happen if we don't get to that future. So they're dystopian relative to the ideal. And one of the dystopian scenarios turned out to be somewhat of a Detroit-like demise for Ontario. So we don't take care of our water resources and we depend on them so much that once they fail, Ontario fails. So that sort of, and then eventually regenerates much like Detroit is now. Uh, the second one is more about reactionary governance. So this is the second dystopian scenario, um, which is a bit of what happens now. It's sort of, there's a problem and the government responds to it with funding or programs um, and what would happen in that case. And that turns out to be somewhat of a battle of the private sector. So a battle between uh, public-private partnerships and uh, industry enclaves, which was an interesting thing that came out of, of that workshop. The, the idea that industry would take over uh, water provision to make sure that they would have enough water and good water for themselves. Um, and they would take care of the people in, who work for them in that way. The thing that I would like to do next is to maybe use the scenarios, uh, and specifically the ideal scenario, and try to rework the the type of infrastructure that we're developing water-wise in Ontario and work with a bunch of different stakeholders, whether it's in academia or outside of it, uh, to try to do that and specifically in the realm of engineering and working with engineering consultants on that, on that project.